Hello, I've got a, a Toyota V6. This is a 3 liter. It's a 2002 Camry. Um, this is a 1MZ FE engine. And I'm having some uh, serious coolant problems here. This car overheated the other night. I uh, let someone borrow the car and they sent me a text back saying that something's wrong with the car. Then they attached a picture. Uh, here's, a, here's a look at that. So once I got on the scene, I uh, brought some coolant with me. There was, uh, there was coolant on the, my right side, driver's side down here, more so. And uh, let, you know, let it cool down, added some coolant to it. And we were finally able to get it home um, after, letting it, after driving it, um, stopping, you know, and refuel, or stopping and let it cool down and continuing to do that for about three times, we finally got it home. During that whole time, the fans were not on at all. So pretty obvious that, um, you know, something was wrong with the fans here. So right up here at the driver's side, there's a little panel here. Just pulled that off and on the cover here, you can see where the fuses are located. And I just went to the uh, fan relay there that's a 10 amp uh, fuse and that is right there pulled that out see if and, and it's a visible fuse so you can see if the wires broken across um, it wasn't it was good so uh, so the next thing that I did which is probably the first thing I should have done is just got the key and started the car Then turn the air conditioner on. The relay fuse box here, right over here next to the battery. Just took that off. There's a diagram here showing you the names of the relays here. Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but um, I'll just show you. There's three. Uh, fan relay relays and um, number one right here here number two is right here and number three is right here uh, to pull these just get a really good grip you may need some um, some gloves or maybe even pliers and just get pretty snug in there. And uh, kind of want to see if they if they they click. So uh, let me show you what I'm going to do for that. So I put. Uh, that relay back in and uh, I'm going to test the relay and also at the same time test the connector um, now again I'm, I'm not sure the name of this if it's a sensor or um, or a switch but uh, I've taken the connector off and it's a single wire and I'm going to take positive probe here from this cheap multimeter. I've got it set on uh, 50 DC milliamps here. What I'm going to try to do is to uh, test it against uh, a ground on the, the black probe here. And listen for a clicking sound on the uh, one of the relays, one of those three relays, and we'll see if it's you know see if it's opening and closing anyway. Uh, doesn't necessarily mean the relay is going to be completely good, but uh, we'll see what happens. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the ignition to the on position. Okay, here's the uh, probe. 
put it right here and all I'm going to do is take the black probe we're going to put it on a ground I'm going to go ahead and take out the sensor that is uh, in the thermostat housing and it is the one wire sensor one one wire connector so let's take the wire push it out of the way now uh, I believe it's a 17 millimeter I don't have a 17 millimeter so I'm gonna to try to get it off with this uh, 11 16th and I'm going to need a deep socket however you use Hopefully we can get it off with this okay I had to use two hands I didn't have a tripod for my uh, camera here but uh It broke loose pretty easy. Now, uh, probably has some antifreeze leaking out a little bit when I take that out. Let me grab a rag. Um, I did not drain the antifreeze from the radiator, so uh, I can see some coming out a little bit there. I don't think it's going to be much, though. Okay, and here's that plug so you can see how wide it is at the bottom there so uh, what I'm going to do is go and try to find this uh, at a auto parts store or online a lot of times it's kind of hard to match them up because you're only going by pictures um, I will be able to bring this in now to the uh, auto parts store. However, I'll probably try to get it online because it can save a lot more money that way. Here's a look at the new sensor one that I just purchased. I uh, got this online. Got it in a couple of days. This is a Beck Arnley uh, sensor sending unit. And it will be replacing this old one here. Everything seems to match up uh, well. Uh, the old one did not have an O-ring. The new one does have a a red uh, O-ring there, rubber O-ring. Everything looks to be the same. Um, I did purchase this for like ten bucks. And uh, it would be best to get an OEM part. Um, if you've got the money to do that, it would be uh, the wise thing to do. Um, I think this is an OEM replacement. I can't remember. But uh, I went ahead and got... I went ahead and got two of these. Because they're pretty cheap. Ten bucks. The other one I got was not a uh, Beck Arnley, but it was a kind of an off-brand. And one of the reasons I got two is because of the price, but also I uh, wasn't really sure what I was going to get in the mail, so I went ahead and just uh, kind of covered my uh, covered the base here and got two. Um, but they both turned out to be the same, and they should both work. But I'm going to go ahead and put the Beck Arnley in. So you can't put uh, Teflon tape on the threads. I didn't do that. Uh, just make sure that you 
keep it on the threads and that you don't get it on the bottom. So this one seems to be going in just fine here. So after putting in sensor three, I may have called this sensor one earlier, but uh, it's the one in the thermos in the uh, thermostat housing there, the one wire. After putting that in, I've been running this car now for about 40 minutes. Uh, it has stayed at uh, normal driving temperature, the gauge anyway, and the fans have come on. So you can see there, I've got uh, the heat on as well. Thermostat is opening. Bottom hose is really hot. You can also you can raise the uh, level by pushing the bottom hose. So uh, fans have came on, they're not on right now. But uh, I'll probably go ahead and drain this system and put those two other sensors in, sensor two, uh, sensor two, one and two, when I get those in the mail. But it looks like uh, the sensor three was uh, the reason they weren't coming on. I was hoping they would come on real quick here. So I think we're good here. Go ahead and put the cap on. And yeah, when I get uh, the other sensors in, I'll probably go ahead and drain this coolant, put some new coolant in. Then I go ahead and check the temperature here. Top hose, 175. Bottom hose, one eighty four. Check this off one more time. Uh, one seventy seven. Kind of waiting for the fans to come on. Uh, let's check the uh, thermostat here. I can't believe that 203. Let me, let me clear this out. It's not 93 outside. Yeah, okay, that's about right. Let's check the thermostat. There they are. Fans are on. I think they came on at 203. 205, 199, 199. Still on. Drops it to 180. Drops it to about 190 and 195. And then they shut off. So uh, yeah, that one, that sensor three right above the thermostat. That seems to have been the problem now. Like I said, I'll probably go ahead and change the other. You can see it's at uh, gauges where it should be. So yeah, I'll probably drain that system, that coolant, because uh, it does need to be drained. Uh, when I change the bottom uh, number one sensor or sending unit down there below the uh, radiator, and again, uh, number two, this is right over here. Uh, when I do get those in the mail. So anyway, I guess I'm going to end the video because uh, they are working now and it looks like it was that number three. So until uh, next time, thank you for watching. Have a great day. Hope this has been helpful. And take care.